Last time we looked at PPE. So property, plant, and equipment is focusing on non-current assets. Okay. They're long-term assets. Do you agree? Yes. Because it's property, plant, and equipment. Okay, we spoke about the cost price of the assets. So if I'm buying PPE, I'm going to record it at what? It's cost, cost price. price. Is the cost price going to change? No. No, it'll stay the same. And the cost price is also going to include other costs like installation, setup, etc. Okay. Non-current assets need to be monitored and controlled. We spoke about asset registers. We need to keep track of all the different assets. Okay, do you remember what carrying value is? Cost minus? Accumulated depreciation. Okay. So cost is what the asset actually the price. had as a price, exactly. Okay, when I bought it. And then obviously the older the asset, this tells me about the age. Okay, how old is the asset? Okay, so the more accumulated depreciation I'll have, the older the asset is. Okay. When processing it, you're going to credit the accumulated depreciation and you're going to debit the depreciation. The one is an expense and the one is a negative asset. Why? Because of disclosure. Okay, you're showing something at the net amount. Okay, meaning what is the asset actually worth? Okay. Not how much did you buy the asset for? Okay, because how much you bought the asset for doesn't mean it's worth that. Yes. Okay, because the asset ages. Yes. Okay. Right, we spoke about the two different methods. Straight line end, diminishing balance. Did I give you any homework from last week? Can't remember now. Okay. Alright, so this was disclosure that relates to what? Detail. Okay, and where do we show detail? In the notes. The notes to the financial statements show all the detail relating to the property, plant, and equipment. Okay, this is the PPE notes. Okay, this could be called note number one, PPE notes. Okay, it's just um, it's just a measure of how much um, assets we've got in the business. Okay, if I'm looking at the carrying value, how do we calculate carrying value? It's the difference between your cost and your accumulated depreciation. Okay, so if I had let's say twelve thousand here, twelve thousand would have made would have been made up of the cost which we'll say is 15 and the accumulated which would then be 3. During the year different things can take place. I can have additions meaning I've bought more equipment. I can have disposals where I've sold. If you're selling it needs to be at carrying value. Okay, Because when I sell something it's always a carrying value. Okay, last week in the theory we spoke about a profit and a loss. If I have a profit my, my proceeds are higher or lower than my carrying value. Higher. My proceeds are higher, yes, because I'll end up with a profit. If I'm selling an asset with a carrying value that's lower, okay, then it's proceeds, I have profits. Okay. If the proceeds are less than the carrying value, then I've at sold something at a loss. Exactly. Depreciation is the use of the assets over time. time. Okay, so if I'm looking at the additions, let's say I've bought 5,000 more. Okay, let's say I've disposed of an asset at carrying value, let's say a thousand, and let's say depreciation for the year was okay, disposal is always negative. Okay, I need to put in the negative, so you would do that. Okay, and the depreciation will say is two. Right, so what would the closing value be? Well, the cost. What will the cost or would the cost change? No. Yes, it would because I bought more. So what's 15 plus 5? Uh, okay, 20. 20. Okay, so the 20,000 is how much do you have? I started with 15, I bought an extra. 5 gives me 20. Okay. okay. Accumulate depreciation. It's this 3,000 plus the 2,000. The 3,000 plus the 2,000, correct, which would be the 5,000. Five. 5, Um, oh, disposal at carrying value. 
Um, if it's carrying value, it's going to affect your cost and your accumulated depreciation. Okay, this will affect cost and accumulated depreciation. Okay, so then carrying value at the end would be what? Um, let's see. Carrying value at the end would be, carrying value at the beginning was 12. So 12 plus 5 is 17. 17 minus 1 minus 3 is, uh, minus 2 is 14. Okay, so the accumulated depreciation here needs to change. Okay, it's going to have to be uh, 6. Okay, just to make the numbers tie up. Okay, let's just check the numbers. 12. 12 plus 5 minus 3 is 14. That's 14. 12, 20 minus 6 is 14. Yes, okay, so the numbers tie up. Okay, just so we have, we have a, a note that's accurate. Okay. All right, the disposal we're going to see in other questions when we do examples of the disposal. Okay, the past papers are actually very good. Okay, what I would suggest you do is maybe look at the... Uh, okay, I will give you homework this week. Okay. Um, maybe you can try it. Um, let's grab the textbook. Okay, the last bit here is just theory. So, study unit 12 you saw is like two pages in the study guide. It's a lot more in the actual textbook. Yeah, the textbook is better here when they look at study unit 12. But it's not something that I've seen them test in... FAC 1502. Okay, it gets tested in other accounting modules. Okay, the next one after this, but you don't have to worry about it if you're not going to be doing the next one. Okay, so okay. it's purely it's a little bit of additional information. Okay, if you do need it, I've never seen them test it, but that can always change because it is part of the textbook. Okay, okay but there's just so much to test that I've never seen them really focus on this too much. Right. So what is a non-current asset? Let's start there. It's uh, it's longer than it. Longer than 12 months. Correct. Okay, so if it's greater than 12 months, it's long term. Okay, so the only one that you're familiar with is PPE. Do you agree? Yes. Property, plants, and equipment. So land, equipment, machinery, vehicles, etc. Yeah. Can you have assets that are long term but are, are not tangible? Yes, which are intangible. Intangible means this is tangible. This is tangible. This is tangible. You can pick it up. Okay. It's tangible. It's a physical asset. Okay. okay, so intangible means you can't pick it up. Correct. It's it's like what? What would what be what would be intangible? Oh, no. Shares. Can you pick up a share? You can't. Okay. Um. What about a copyright? A trademark. <coughs> okay. Um. Property rights. Okay. So you have the right to do whatever. Okay. You have that ability to use a property okay so the property is tangible but the right to use the property would be intangible, intangible. Okay. okay so rights copyright trademarks uh, brands even a brand okay a brand could also be an intangible okay financial instruments those are also intangible um, instruments would be like shares bonds etc cash investments and investments in shares okay what is the accounting effect on the different types of accounts what are all of these it's assets. Correct. So what would you do to the account? Mm, increase on the debit side exactly. and decrease on credit. Good. So if I'm looking at buying a, an asset, I'm going to debit the asset. If I look at selling an asset, it's going to be a credit decrease. decrease. Okay, but they're all assets. Okay. So the most important thing is obviously keep it simple. Assets are assets. Doesn't matter what it is. Here we're just adding more types of assets. Okay. okay, so obviously if I talk about machinery, you know it's an asset. asset. Now if I talk about an intangible asset, it's an asset. If I talk about a copyright, it's an asset. asset. Okay. okay. Right, so those are some of the ones that you can get. Goodwill, development, brands, copyright, franchises, etc. Can a financial instrument also be a liability? I can imagine this. Yes, it can. Okay, because sometimes you buy something and it loses value. Sometimes the type of asset you're buying is a loan, is a liability. Okay, so you can issue liability. So if you issue a bond, it would be a 
liability. Liability. Okay, so you're issuing a bond to raise capital, so the business will have a liability. The business needs to pay back the bond. Okay, so equity is ordinary or preference or convertible. Contractual agreements exist. Debentures is a loan type of share, which is actually a liability. Okay, that's the one that they talk about quite a bit in the textbook. Okay, are we going to measure these assets at fair value? Yes. What is fair value? The current value of the assets. Okay, so if I buy, if I buy a financial instrument today, will the financial instrument hold its value or will the value change? It will change. It'll change. Why will the value change? The market. Okay, people either want those shares or they don't. People either want those loans or they don't. So when looking at financial assets, they need to be measured at the market value or the fair value. Okay, market or fair value. Right, because that determines what the, the asset is actually worth today. Right, and there's very strict disclosure. Why? Because these assets are risky. Okay, you could have bought something today that's worth X and tomorrow the price can change. Okay, you have to record that appropriately. Okay, you, so you have to show what the actual amount is, okay, the worth, the asset's value. Okay, is that alright? Yeah. Perfect. Okay, when looking at investments, investments are recorded at what? Cost price. Okay, so the same thing as before. If I buy an investment, what am I going to record? The cost price. Okay, so if I'm buying a fixed deposit, or if I'm investing in a fixed deposit, what type of account is the fixed deposit? What definition does it meet? Uh, Asset. Okay, what is the fixed deposit? It's money that's in the bank. Savings, basically, yes. Okay, for a fixed amount. Okay, so you've, you've deposited the money for... Six months, 12 months, two years, three years, and the bank will give you a certain amount of interest on that fixed deposit. Okay, so if I've got an investment that's a fixed deposit, it's fixed for that period. Okay, you can't access it, but it's a resource. Okay, so why do I debit it? Because it's an asset. Why do I credit the bank? I had to take cash to invest in the fixed deposit. Okay, so asset increase, asset decrease. Okay. Next bit. The returns. Does the fixed deposit give you interest? Yes. yes, it would. So now the return on the fixed deposit could be added to the value of the fixed deposit or it could be paid out to you as the investor. Okay, so the first bit is capitalizing the return. What does that mean? Adding to the value of the asset. Okay, so the fixed deposit is going to grow in value. Today it's worth 10, tomorrow it'll be worth 11. Okay. Okay. So what do I do to the investment? I increase it. How do I increase the value of an investment? Well, what type of account is it? It's an asset. Correct. So if it's an asset, what do I do to it to increase it? I debit it. Exactly. Okay, so you would debit the investment to increase, increase it. it. And you would credit the investment if you, were, if you had to decrease, decrease it. it. If you didn't want the investment to increase in value and you want the interest to be paid to you, would you affect the bank? Yes. Yes, because the bank would go up because you're getting more money paid. Right. Okay, so you can either get the actual interest, so bank will be affected, or you can ask for the returns to be capitalized. Okay, okay so add it to the value of the investment or pay it out in cash. Okay, but they're all going to still affect income. Okay, income increases when you get some benefits. Is that right? Okay. But they're all assets. The assets are increasing, the assets decreasing. Okay. okay. Right, then here's a note about the initial investment in shares or equity. Okay. If a company is buying shares in a company X, what's going to happen to the shares? Increase or decrease? If you're mm -hmm. buying, increase. What type of account would that be viewed as? 
Assets. Correct. Okay, so if you if a company, if a business is buying shares in another business, it's going to be viewed as a asset. asset. So debit the asset, debit the investment, credit the bank. If they're using if they're using cash to buy the investment. Okay, what's going to happen to the value of the investment? It's going to change. Okay, so if I buy shares in company X, and let's say the shares are worth 10. Tomorrow, they might be worth 11. Is that good or bad? That's good. That's good. Okay, the value of the investment has gone up. So how do I change that investment's value? I need to increase it. Okay, so if the return is positive, did I make a gain? Yes, yes. I did. Okay, so the gain on the fair value adjustment. Fair value adjustment means what it's actually worth today. Okay, yesterday it was worth 10. Today it's worth 11. So did I make a gain? Yes. What type of account do you think the gain is going to be viewed as? Asset. No, the gain. Or income. Yes. Okay, the asset is going to increase in value. The gain is seen as income. Okay, so you're going to debit the asset, credit the income. Right, what happens if tomorrow the share is actually worth 9? It decreases. Okay, that's a decrease in value. Right, so that would be a loss on fair value adjustments. Okay, so that's why I have this, debit the loss. Why? What type of account do you think that is going to be viewed as? Expense. An expense. Good. And the investment, is the investment worth more or less? Less. Correct. So how do I decrease the investment? You need to credit it. Exactly. Okay, you'd have to credit it because it's seen as a asset. Does it make sense? Yes. Okay, so your expense will either go up or your expense will come down, down depending on what it is.